As we said in England, we could talk till the cows come home. Ah, we could talk until the cows come home. <laughs> we could argue until the cows come home. Yeah, okay. We could talk until the cows come home. <laughs> Again today we are with Jeremy. Very happy to see you again today. Uh, the podcast today we talk about different ways to make people like you. I mean, like we always love, um, like people are craving for attention, right? All I the time. So. We love people. We want to be popular, right? Yeah, everyone likes to be liked. I think everyone wants to be liked. Yeah. So um, on my hand here we have a very classic book named How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is a very classic book. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh I'm God. positive. Really? Uh, it's from Dale Carnegie, and it's uh, oh, it's so over 16 million copies. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like he's very famous. And basically, uh, this is a book that I say that is a must read for everyone. Uh, it's uh, good for your English because they they he wrote in a very simple language. Mm. Anyway, long story short, or in a nutshell, in a nutshell, that's uh, Jeremy's favorite uh, <laughs> phrase. Uh, today I will talk about the six ways that he summarized in this book. Six ways to make people like you. So rule number one: become genuinely interested in other people. Mm. So what do you think about that rule? Um, yeah, I would say like have empathy. You know mm. what I mean? Care mm. about other people, mm. what they're doing, mm. uh, how their day was. Mm. Uh, maybe um, you know what their plans are for the future if they have a vision and things mm. like that mm. so yeah I would say uh, yeah in a genuine way just yeah. to have like uh, empathy you know what I mean mm -hmm. and maybe you think of other people before you think mm. of yourself uh, you know like in this in this book he say in a very nice way let me show you so he say like he did mention about the dog so he say he says this is a very interesting lie that I see so he say that a dog is the only animal that doesn't have to work for a living. <laughs> because whenever the dog sees you, he will uh, waste his tail and then uh, jump uh, with excitement, like genuinely mm. like you. And mm. that's why people really love dogs. Mm. And because in here they say, like, um, a hen has to lay eggs, a cow has to give milk, a canary has to sing, but a dog makes his living by giving you nothing but love mm. that's very that's what they say the uh, man's best friend right yeah that's man's what we best say. friend man's best friend yeah so uh, when you genuine genuinely love people like show the real interest in people then that's how you uh, win their heart I, think uh, I can never like i can pretend that i really like you but you can feel the energy whether it is real or not mm. am i right or right? yeah i think i think for me as well I, i've been here uh, like almost five years now mm -hmm. Um, and uh, like we say, a lot of Western people can put on a poker face, ah, uh, yeah. so you can't really read their mind or mm. read their thought. Mm. But for me personally, um, uh, Vietnamese people are very uh, like uh, like e emotional mm. and uh, expressive. yeah, expressive, and they, they can't really hide their feelings. Mm -hmm. You can always tell that something's on their mind. Mm or they're not happy with you or mm. the situation they're in mm. they're very very easy to read so easy to read yeah so. they're very easy to read for me anyway personally mm. i think uh, which is not a bad thing you know what i mean mm. you know where you are mm. you know you know where you stand with them even if they don't want to tell you the truth you still mm. know that something's wrong right mm. right right so rule number two is smile it makes me remember one of the famous saying by uh, charlie chaplin uh, a day without laughter is a day wasted and I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, your smile, I think your smile is your currency. What do you think about the importance of smile? In here they say smile. Yes, yeah, smile and laughter. I would mm. put them both together. Mm. Um, obviously, uh, laughter is good therapy for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and smile, you know, from the outside looking in from other people. Mm. If they see that you, you know, you always have a smile on your face. Mm. Uh, yeah, they they like it it's bright it's happy yeah. and maybe it makes them feel good and they think you know he or she is always happy they always have a smile on their face yeah. even if deep inside that you know you you have a problem or you're worried about something yeah. then uh, you know still have a smile on your face mm. uh you know, but I would say. <laughs> Especially, yeah, like you, you, yeah, you, look, you look better when you smile like that, mm. right? So, yeah, good. Uh, rule number three, remember that a person's name 
is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language? Um, how, how would you feel if I call you Jeremy all the time? Morning, Jeremy. How's uh, your day, Jeremy? Like calling by your name. You would uh, feel like more special? Rather uh, yeah, than actually, I, I can see some people saying that, but for me, it's... I mean, obviously, I don't want to be called Oi, you know, or something like that. But yeah, yeah to call someone by their, you know, their first name or mm -hmm. even their nickname mm -hmm. or sometimes even their surname, yeah. you know, that's shortened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because to that person, it means that uh, you remember them. Yes. You know, you didn't forget them. You mm -hmm. might have only met them once. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it just means that, you know, you have a good memory yeah. and you obviously, I always say when you meet someone, it's mm. not the first impression that counts, it's mm. the lasting impression. Because yeah. if you meet someone for the first time, sometimes mm. they can be nervous, mm. shy, mm. and then maybe you will judge them. Mm. But then when you, you've left them, it's the, the lasting effect and right. it, that you think, actually, I would like to meet them again because there's just, I couldn't put my finger on it. You know, mm. there's something about them. Can't put my say. finger on it. It's another, <laughs> <laughs> you love using idiom. Right. Uh, that one is a good one. Um, and like, I would love people call me Charlotte because if someone knows me for a long time, they would know that I love being called by my nickname in English rather than calling me Chang. So if someone call me like Morning Charlotte, I would feel very happy, mm. something like that. Right. Well, what is rule number four here? Yeah, be a good listener. Uh, encourage others to talk about themselves. I think this one is quite challenging, right? Because naturally people love talking. So how can you practice to become a good listener? Um, I think for, for me, mm. uh, being a Westerner and being from England, uh, mm. being a good listener is quite quite high on the list. High on the list? Yeah, because, uh, yeah, ah. because uh, a lot of people have uh, a lot of stress in their life, mm. family reasons, mm. other reasons, and maybe they just want to vent they want to vent on someone. Vent uh, on? Like yeah. throw the trash on someone? Yeah, vent means that they just want to uh, talk about their problems, ah. but maybe they don't want to talk to their family. Ah. They would prefer to talk to a friend or oh. an outsider to, to get it off their chest, right? Ah. Um, yeah, so to be a good listener, I think people mm. people would, uh, you know, I, I would think regard that quite high on the list. Mm, quite high on the list. Um, and mm. we're, we're quite... In, in England, we're quite funny about, uh, like, interrupting. Mm. You know, if someone's talking, mm. then you wait till uh, someone's finished. Ah, right. And then, then you give your answer. Not like when they're talking, you, you sort of interrupt. Mm -hmm. you, uh, it's quite respectful to let them finish. Mm. And for them, I think it means a lot too. It means that you actually are listening. Because if you're listening, and then halfway through the conversation, you start to interrupt, they think, well, you're, you're not really interested. Mm. You're not listening to, till I finished. Yeah. So. But I think that most important thing is that when, let's say when I listen to your story, I remember the key words. Mm. I remember like the small details to, to prove that I'm a good listener, mm. right? That's very important, right? So it would be the frown upon in English culture if people are speaking and I jump into the conversation, people would frown at me. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe they would think it's like um, a little bit rude or something mm. like that. Not all, but mm. some. Mm. Um, yeah, especially if they're telling you they're confessing something to you mm. or they're, you know, they're they're sort of venting about a problem they want to get off their chest, right? Mm. Uh, so unless they ask you for your opinion mm. halfway through, but just just let them vent, vent, vent until they finished, That's a very nice and one, then I uh, obviously you can. Uh, mm you know, right. give your opinion and give them your advice and everything when, when they're yeah. done. Mm. That's great. A lot of uh, useful idioms. Uh. Huh? Let off the chest. <laughs> uh, vent, uh, vent into. Vent. Uh, yeah, just vent. means that you uh, vent. to vent to someone uh, so about right. your problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, principle number five, talk in terms of the other person's interests. What do you think about that rule? Um, like, like, let's say, talk about your interests. Like, you love nutrition, so I just keep talking about nutrition with you or ask you about that. Yeah, I guess. I wouldn't say it's that hard. It's always good to have things in common with people mm -hmm. or even uh, be interested in, uh, you know, their their beliefs or their hobbies or yeah. something like that. Mm. Um, yeah, but I, I wouldn't say... For me, it's not massively high. Mm. But then, not you know... Not massively high. But for me, like, I'm the teacher and a fitness coach. Yeah. So if someone started talking about fitness and nutrition and everything to me, then, uh, you know, as we said in England, we could talk till the cows come home. Ah, we could talk until the cows come home. <laughs> 
You can argue until the cows come home. Yeah, okay. I'm here to pick a talk until the cows come home. That's great. Okay, the last principle, number six. Make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. Sincerely. Uh, How would sincerely. you say? Sincerely. Yeah. Sincerely. I guess it means like um, I need to make you feel special, feel important. And then I need to do it in the sincere, sincere, way. sincere way. Like if you can make someone feel special. How could I make you feel special though? Like, let's say, like, yeah, I think it's quite important mm. to make someone feel special, and mm. it depends on the situation and everything. Mm. But mm. you know, you can, uh, you know, make them feel special. You, um, you know, you remember a special occasion, uh, yeah. a like birthday, birthday, yeah, an anniversary, yeah. Mm. Um, or your favorite flavor. Yeah, you or... told me that you love uh, wood. Wood scent. Wood, wood, yeah, I like the smell of See, wood. See, I remember. Mm. Yeah, I like the. Well. <laughs> Lav- I like lavender. Yes, yeah. I, do I like remember. lavender. So that is kind of like small detail. Mm. Make people feel special. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. So there are six things in here, which is this book, like summarized, is quite nicely, like really nice. Um, so I, I can re- recommend these uh, books enough. The- what they say, the best things come in small packages. Ah, the best thing come in small packages. <laughs> I love Jeremy. He really loves using the idiom in a very natural context. So there's a six rule here. Would you like to uh, add in some, like, if your personal opinion, like, what would be your extra one? Just only one. What would you um, add on to the list? Hmm. How to make people like you. Um, I would say uh, like lead by example or be lead, a lead by, lead by example or be a good role model. That's what I would say. Be a good role model. Yeah, like uh-huh. uh, do everything you know. Do like everything you do. Do it like uh, wholeheartedly. Do it a hundred percent. Give it a hundred. Yeah, and just 10%. lead by example uh, mm. for for small kids and mm. and things like that. Mm. You know, because people, kids, when they're growing up, they they have someone they look up to or mm. role model or even yeah. an, an mm. idol or something, mm-hmm. you know. So I would just say, uh, you know, just be a good role model mm. to, to everyone. And then if you can do that, then I think a lot of people are like you. That one is a very interesting topic. Hope you guys can learn something from that and apply that and uh, to be more popular. Uh, to be a useful person and can have something uh, spread uh, good energy to people around you. I think uh, I would add like energy, energy into that little positive energy because people just, if you have the negative, if you spread out negative energy or you always moan or complain, then people will stay away from you. Yeah, positive right? energy. Mm. Positive, positive energy is so mm. important. Yeah, thank you, you guys. Uh, and hopefully this episode, the podcast about uh, six ways to make other people like you, useful uh, and help you guys um, to become better in your life. Uh, stay tuned and leave the comments below to add in onto the list uh, the other ways that you think personally to help people uh, like you. Uh, thank you so much. Stay tuned and see you in the next podcast. Bye. Bye.